Hi makers, welcome to Micro Monsters. We've had some great feedback over the last couple of weeks about one of the episodes we did about turning a retro radio into a modern internet streaming radio. And so we thought we would do a new series, a longer build series or a bigger project series, showing you our next creation and go through how we uh, kind of invented it, how we designed it and everything we made. So what we're gonna be making over the next couple of episode of videos is this. Um, those of you who've been fans of Harry Potter may have heard of a Weasley clock. Those of you who haven't, it's a clock in the film where the Weasley family can see where members of their family are at any time. So what we've built here, using a, a 1960s quite stylish clock, is our own Weasley clock. So if you look closer there, you can see all the different locations we've got, from home to work to travelling to tweeting, uh, to going to London. So they're all the places that I go. And so I wanted something in the house um, that would show the family where I am and when I'm coming back home and when I'm traveling. So that's what we've built. So over the next uh, five episodes, we're gonna show you how we designed it, uh, how we made various parts of it, how we created the clock face, how we did the code for it, and how we brought it all together. Um, if you wanna see a demo of it, you're gonna have to wait till the last, very last episode, and we'll show you it really working for real. But in this episode, we're gonna, gonna crack on, show you how we took this clock and took it apart to start with, um, and how we started figuring out how to get all the pieces in and how to design it. So let's get on with that. So this is the clock we used. Um, bought it on eBay for around £13, and it's a 1960s um, kind of style American clock. Uh, it doesn't work. It came with the kind of mains lead chopped off, but you can see it's quite a handsome wooden case uh, with a nice dial on the front. So really, it was to start taking it apart and figuring out how we could use it. One great thing about this clock is you could open the front of it, which means I could get real access to the dial and everything. I was worried about how we'd kind of get it open, but you can see there it's kind of got a hinged front and a really nice clock face. So it made it really easy to get to it. And at the back, you can kind of see some screws there and a hole where the mains lead used to go. So being careful about the front of the clock, so obviously it was glass, we didn't want to crack that. We unscrewed the back here and took a few screws out. They came out relatively easily. Made sure I put them aside and it was great to put a video of this to remember which screws went where. And then once we'd got that, we started removing the face, the dial of the clock, to work out how we could actually start to get inside. It wasn't immediately clear um, how we could get all the movement out of the clock. So the next step was then to work out how to get these hands off. They really didn't want to come off very well. We had to kind of get pliers to pull them off. Uh, and even then we only really managed to get the little hand off, which is the one we kind of decided to use anyway, so it made it a bit easier. We really had to pull and eventually the top came off like that. But then we spent quite a while trying to kind of pry off the, the remaining hands. Uh, we did a kind of try all kinds of stuff to start with, but eventually kind of levering it with a screwdriver managed to get that little hand off uh, with a little bit of pressure it popped off and even though in this video I don't show removing the other hand eventually that's how I got the other hand off as well by kind of levering it up and it popped off the uh, the kind of center bit it was on. So once I got to this stage it was clear that it wasn't going to come off from the front so what I had to do is take off these little um, nuts inside these little brass mountings and they took a little bit of getting off and levering off I eventually managed to get one of my sockets set to fit it and took each one off. You can kind of see there not a lot of room between the edge of the brass piece and the, the nut to get it off so it did take a bit of work but eventually we did manage to get it and then from the back we're able to push the clock movement out and the clock face and it came out in kind of one nice little bit like you can see here leaving the case pretty much untouched nice wooden case and then the clock movement at the front here now lots of kind of rubbish was coming out of this stage I think it was all various washers that had perished over time and so lots of dirt books coming out as we were taking all this apart but you can see here at the back of the case is a metal box kind of enclosing it I guess for the fact it was electric clock kind of insulating everything uh, so we started to take that apart and that just really unscrewed relatively easily just taking these bolts off the back here didn't really take much effort and then the silver casing came straight off And what that left us in inside was a quite nice clock movement. Um, we had kind of look, a look at this. There's kind of all kinds of stuff going on here that I wasn't sure what was going on. There's quite a large transformer in it and lots of gears all kind of lined up to the clock. Um, if I was better and knew about clocks, we'd have been able to actually use these gearings in, in our final design. But I decided that taking out the movement was going to make how we wanted to do this a lot simpler. 
So after lots of kind of levering and trying to figure out how things would work, I eventually managed to get um, the dial of the big hand to separate from the rest of the mechanism. It took quite a lot of pulling and pushing and then eventually I could lift it off as easily as this and take the dial and this hand away, leaving effectively the rest of the clock mechanism. And that was very easy to detach from the front of the face. And really that's all we want is this front of the face. And on the back of the face, you could see these kind of three stands, uh, which we were then going to use to mount the servo on in the final clock. So finally, after taking it all apart, that left us with the clock face, the hands, the actual kind of outside wooden part of the clock, and then the bit that held the clock face with a kind of mount on the back that we'd be able to mount our new servo mechanism to. And that's everything we needed, really. And I then started to form a plan how we could go and how it would all work. So then we kind of moved on to the next step, which was to make a new clock face, which come see our next video. If you keep subscribing to us, you'll see it come up in the next day or so, and you'll see how we designed and made our next clock face. Thanks for watching. See you next time.